If you want to see some sensible transfers for your team, The Athletic are covering every club listed here. Get a 30-day free trial and start reading now. In this series, we analyse teams, identify problem areas and suggest solutions in the form of incoming transfers. Today's team is Barcelona. Welcome to Sensible Transfers. Barcelona's issues are structural and systemic. Over-reliant on the genius of Lionel Messi, the club are caught in a bind. Plan for the future while still depending on Messi in the present. Wage constraints, political complexities and managerial uncertainty all make the task of overhauling Barcelona extremely difficult. La Masia's fabled production line has stalled, and while some extremely talented youngsters like Ricky Puig and Ansu Fati remain, many more like Mark Cucurella, Eric Garcia, Pablo Moreno and Robert Navarro among them have left. And because of this, Barcelona's age profile is poor. Too many players are in their twilight years, while the Arta Mello swap for Miralem Pjanic both ages the squad and makes little sense in sporting terms. The acquisitions of Pedri from Las Palmas and Trinco from Braga are good, as was that of Frankie de Jong last year. But reducing the average age of the squad is an absolute necessity. Barcelona's squad is top-heavy with older players on high wages and much of their recent transfer business has been poor. Vast sums have also been shelled out on largely inferior players, many of whom have already moved on. Even the qualified successes like Antoine Griezmann and Arturo Vidal have come at a huge cost in fees and wages. And tactically, the club of Cruyff, Guardiola and Luis Enrique has stuttered under first Ernesto Valverde and now Quique Setien. Valverde and Setien also play very different football. The former was direct, counter-pressing, pragmatic, and the latter possession-focused, pressing with a higher defensive line, positionally fluid. It's hard not to think that a club that once seemed so philosophically secure is drifting. Barcelona needs so much that it's hard to know where to start. But we've identified three key positions for the rebuild. Luis Suarez's 16 La Liga goals are still an excellent return for the hard-working, tactically astute 33-year-old. But a replacement of real quality is a necessity. Unfortunately for Barcelona, top-tier forwards in the Suarez mold are obviously highly sought after. PSV's Daniel Marlon is an interesting option. Adept at dropping off and then bursting forwards to get into good scoring positions, he also runs the channels well and looks a lively, intelligent footballer. Last season, he managed 0.83 non-penalty goals plus assists per 90 while acting as the focal point for PSV's attack once he'd returned from a lengthy knee injury which strongly suggests no lasting issues. And at 21, he's a long-term prospect. Another different option is the 25-year-old Joaquin Correa of Lazio. Almost more of a second striker, Correa nonetheless managed 0.49 non-penalty goals plus assists per 90 last season. He also managed 1.4 key passes and 3.2 shot-creating actions per 90, and he draws a lot of fouls with his ball carrying. It would require a change of style, but Correa would weigh in with goals and creativity. But of course, the obvious choice is Latura Martinez. This will mean a fight with teams like Manchester City, but Martinez is probably the best young striker in Europe's top five leagues who hasn't just joined a new club. 0.51 goals and 1.5 shots on target per 90, both of which are top 25 in Europe's top 5, as well as 0.11 assists. Martinez doesn't have the lethal efficiency of Haaland or Greenwood, but he's performing in line with his expected goals, which suggests this level of quality is sustainable or even improvable. He looks ready to step into the boots of a great striker and Barcelona will be hoping it's theirs. Frankie de Jong should be Barcelona's long-term solution at defensive midfield, and Puig should play as an advanced eight, but Barcelona needs someone to inject energy, attacking dynamism and a bit of bite, essentially Vidal but younger. Barcelona's top three midfield pressers are Vidal, Busquets and Rakitic, all 32 or older, and two could leave this summer. Assuming that Conrad Lima or Sevilla's Joan Jordan, who would excel on the right of Barcelona's midfield, are unavailable, Lyon's Maxence Cacare is a great prospect. He's only played 600 minutes, but his 10.6 successful pressures, 2.2 passes blocked and 1.4 interceptions, all per 90, stand out. He's just 20 and his sample size is too small to merit real comparison, but he is one to keep an eye on. Another option is relegated to lose is Ibrahim Sangare. 
who was third in Liga for tackles won for players over 600 minutes. He brings height, athleticism, and good long passing. While he presses less well than some, he has an all-round defensive presence that Barcelona might benefit from. And he'd also be relatively inexpensive. Our pick, though, is Manchester United's Fred, who probably won't get the game time he deserves with United's move to a 4-2-3-1 to accommodate Bruno Fernandes. Fred's pre-lockdown performances went largely unremarked upon, but 8.1 successful pressures, 2.3 passes blocked and 1.6 interceptions all per 90 mark him out as one of Europe's top central midfielders for defensive actions. He's also a useful option for dropping deep and bringing the ball out. He's technically capable, good with both feet and can get up to support moves in the right half space. Barcelona could probably get a decent deal out of United too. Fred won't set pulses racing, but he's exactly the sort of signing that would really benefit Barcelona and give their midfield more balance. Sergio Roberto has actually performed relatively well, but Barcelona's fullbacks, especially on the right, seem to struggle with when to move forwards and exploit space and when to sit off. In effect, Roberto is less a right-back, more just a player who plays in that position, and Barcelona have also shown little desire to fight off suitors for Nelson Semedo. Emerson remains on loan at Real Betis, but his complicated situation means we've not considered him either. The inexpensive wildcard option is Brescia's 27-year-old Stefano Sabelli. With 10.2 progressive passes, 1.1 key passes, and 1.5 passes into the penalty area per 90, he certainly weighs in offensively. He's especially adept at penetrative passing through the lines rather than crossing, which suits Barcelona. He'd also be fairly cheap, given Brescia's relegation, but it could be too sizable a step up. Closer to home, Real Madrid youth product Alvaro Tejero, currently at Ibar, brings great passing numbers and defensive solidity, but possibly lacks the attacking dynamism to overlap properly, as shown by his lack of assists this season. Our selection, though, is Serginho Dest of Ajax. Quick, technically excellent, a good ball carrier and dynamic attacking presence on the overlap, Dest has everything to become one of the world's leading right-backs. With 0.25 assists per 90 last season, in just under 1,500 minutes, he's a capable attacker who can improve. 2.7 tackles plus interceptions 1 per 90 show that he's no slouch defensively either. Barcelona would face competition from others, notably Bayern Munich and Juventus, but at 19, Dest is a long-term option who could tie up Barcelona's right flank for years to come. His appeal as a US men's national team international shouldn't be lost on the Catalan side either. There are commercial as well as footballing upsides to this acquisition. If you want to read a sensible transfers piece about your team, then you're in luck. We've expanded the series onto The Athletic, where dedicated club journalists have written a sensible transfer style article for every club listed here. And you can read The Athletic for free for 30 days by visiting theathletic.com forward slash TIFO football. Thanks for watching today's video.